Shalom, mighty men of valor. What a great responsibility to be a man. I already said, many jasho, many effort. But the nice part of that is the original call. Be fruitful and multiply. Replenish the earth. Subdue it. Have dominion over the sea, over the air, and over every living thing that moves upon the earth. This is Adam's cave, a space where we seek to speak candidly, concisely, and clearly, just like warriors do. I'm your host, Kisinja Kiprotich. It's always my absolute honor and joy to have you in this cave. So we celebrate every eve those Abigals who call out the kings and every Adam who draws out the admiration of Eves. So let's engage on our SMS line 20933 or WhatsApp line 0717 400 555 or just go to Twitter hashtag Adam's Cave or a comment on Hope TV and Hope FM social media pages. Now, Sitam held a very powerful and impactful meeting the last few weeks, Family Discipleship Conference, FDC, that brought hefty conversation to the table, LGBTQ, blended families, marriage and singlehood, and many other topics. So if you missed it, just catch it up in our social media pages. The conversations underscored a very salient yet very powerful role of a man in the society in providing leadership and harmony in the society. So let's have a conversation. Show yourself a man. Show yourself a man. And I would like to say that in the old English, show yourself a man. And to help us think through this conversation is our keynote speaker at FDC, Dr. Kingsley Okongo. Dr. Kingsley is a Nigerian pastor, is a best-selling author and a television host, is a relationship coach and a counselor. He's the founder and a leader, lead pastor of David Christian Center, DCC in Lagos, Nigeria. So allow me to welcome him to the cave. Welcome, Dr. Ari. Hey, hey, thank you so much, Kisinga. Yes. <laughs> I'm happy to be here. No, thank you. We had a great conversation as you took us through the FDC, the many topics yes, as you spoke to the singles, the married right. people. Yes. Extremely powerful conversation. Thank you. Welcome thank to you. Kenya. Thank you. I've been having a good time. Is it your first time, Dr. Kong? Yeah, it's my first time to be here to minister. Yeah. But I've been here on my way to Zanzibar, so I stayed one or two days ah. here before. That was some years ago, a while ago. Yes. So you should make some time to just go to the park and see some animals. Yeah, that would be great. That'd yeah. Be, I, li I like animals, interesting. Still. Yes. So, yeah. And who is who is uh, Dr. Congo? Oh, um, well. Apart from what I've said, so, the many things <laughs> that I've said. <laughs> uh, well, um, I'm, I'm first of all a pastor, and um, I've been a pastor for a while. Uh, but um, these days, um, I'm also a relationship coach, a marriage counselor, and that has been what I do more now. Um, you know, in my later years in ministry, that's what I'm known more for now. Mm -hmm. You know, but I've been in ministry for um, close to 30 years now, so about 28. Also years, so thirty years. You yes. must have left campus and straight into yes. into ministry. Yes, yes. I Did you always have this call in your heart to do this? Yes. Uh, well, from the period I became born again, mm -hmm. I just knew I was going to do ministry. So I, I have not done any other thing wow. with my life since I left. Um, in fact, I left secondary school. Yes. Yeah. So the moment I got born again, I just knew in my spirit that this is what I'm going to do. So um, I've been doing that all my life. Wow, yes. Pastor, what in, what what drew your interest to really specialize on on marriage and, and family? Interestingly, uh, mm. many people think that maybe um, God appeared to me or God <laughs> spoke to me. No, it was just a burden I had in my heart because sometimes God speaks to us mm. through the burdens we have, mm. through the passion we have. So I discovered that when I was a young preacher, I was pastoring young youths. And um, I just always had a burden for a relationship. Anytime I saw a boy and a girl together, I always felt, hope they are doing it right, hope they are following the right principles, you know. It was just there. So one, one, one year like that, in 1999 or there about, or 98, um, Valentine's Day was coming. <laughs> and I knew that young people always make some bad decisions during that period because mm -hmm. of the pressure. So I just told my team, let's do a, re a program for relationship. Mm -hmm. You know, love dating and sex. And they all felt it was going to be a great idea. Mm -hmm. But those days, it wasn't even common <laughs> to have sex on a church no. flyer. Mm -hmm. So a lot of people, I met some of my mentors. They said, look, church people are going to frown at it. <laughs> but they told me the people you're trying to reach, the young people will love it. Mm -hmm. So they told me to go ahead and do it. So we printed it, did it, and the place was maxed out. That was our highest wow. attendance as a fellowship at that time. Everyone yes. maxed out. I didn't even know what I was going to say because, you know, <laughs> I had not done this before. I All I had was the body and the passion. Yes. But see, most times, your body and passion are pointing to the gift God has given you. Amen. All right? It's something in you is trying to find expression. Mm. I tell people, why do fish swim? 
They say because they have fins and gills. I say no, fish swim because they were created to swim. Oh, wow. I say why do birds fly? I say because they have wings. I say no, not all birds that have wings or feathers can fly. Mm-hmm. Birds fly because they were created to fly. I said, so there are things in you and in every human being and every man out there watching, there are things in you that are always trying to find expression if you pay attention to the burdens and the passions of your heart. So I stepped up there that day. As I opened my mouth to speak, I began to share what was in my heart. It's like a tap mm. opened. And that tap has not shut till today. Amen. Every day I speak about relationship, things just keep flowing. And um, I have um, over five, about 500,000 subscribers on YouTube, loads of books, loads of millions of followers on social media, all because that tap has never stopped flowing since that day. Amen. Yeah. I was very delighted. I went through your books and you have so many books, books. on relationships. Yes. <laughs> so I was even tempted to ask you, which is your favorite book? book. <laughs> <laughs> you have so many. My favorite book is the next book I'm going to write. <laughs> <laughs> I have so many books and wow. interestingly, mm. I have more books I have not written mm. than the ones I've written. Wow. Because of you, you asked me that earlier, because of this, my traveling schedule is crazy. As I'm in Kenya now, I'm traveling out of Kenya on Saturday. I'm back to Nigeria on Sunday to preach my Sunday service. Then I'm out to Canada on Monday. Wow. for another um, three weeks because we're, in, we're going to seven cities in Canada. Wow. So my schedule makes it more difficult for me to write. So I have a lot of books that are in the, in the creation yes. process, but I've not been able to publish because mm. I'm always on the road. So um, I love all my books. All my books are an expression of something I have in my heart, an expression of questions people have been asking me. So all my books answer a specific need or question. Mm. I don't just write abstractly. I write based on what I see that people need and what God has anointed me to answer to mm. the question, yes. Well, I did get a hold of <laughs> this particular book. book yes. <laughs> <laughs> I like this one. <laughs> yes. like that one. Mm-hmm. And then A to Z of, of marriage. marriage. Yes. <laughs> very, very interesting so, books. Yes. Very interesting books. Mm-hmm. And I think you touched a bit on during the FDC conference, mm-hmm. some of them, some of the great mm-hmm. concepts. Yes, yes. And I know we'll get into that. Yes. And do you have any other, apart from all this traveling, don't you miss your food in Nigeria? Because I, ah. I worked in Nigeria for a while. Well, and I love pepe, <laughs> I love the nice food, yeah, the, the yeah. environment. Well, <laughs> Do you miss your country sometimes? Yeah, yes. oh, definitely, definitely. I miss, yeah. I miss Nigeria yeah. as we travel, yes. Any favorite food? Yeah, my favorite food, <laughs> interestingly. I'm, I'm a very versatile person, yes. so I enjoy different kind of food at different times. So mm. definitely I love uh, beans and yam. Yes, yeah. pounded yams. Yeah. <laughs> so then I love amala. I don't know if you know amala. Yes, yes. yes. Oh, yes. You know amala. yes. <laughs> it made the yam powder and mm. all that, you know. So, but I love pepper too. Yes. So anywhere we go, sometimes we even carry our own pepper with us when we're going somewhere. <laughs> so when we buy the food, we pour the pepper in it. Yeah. <laughs> oh, that's interesting. Mm. I also noticed very interesting that your your wife is always almost traveling with yes. you. Yes. And you almost know her name, Mildred. I mean, yes. we really celebrate her yes. for standing by you. Mm-hmm. You've always been together in ministry? Um, no, I started ministry some years before yeah. we got married. So yes, I've been in ministry for maybe five, seven years before mm-hmm. we got married. But since that time, um, we've been married for 18 years now. Since that time, she has been with me through it, yes. Okay. How did you propose to her? Oh, interestingly. <laughs> <laughs> interestingly, uh, mm-hmm. it was in my house. Mm-hmm. Um, it was Valentine's Day. Yes. Um, so I gave her a gift. Um, again, it's part of what we thought about how men need to be more romantic oh, and emotional. Yes, so yes. Um, I gave her a gift. This was, there was a watch, a particular swatch watch, mm-hmm. but it had, it was written, it had French writings on it. When you click the watch, when you hit the watch, the hands rotate to one particular side of the watch. So there are different things. There's, I love you a lot. There's, I love you little. There's, I'm madly in love with you, all in French. So when you click the watch, it goes to one of those places. So I gave her that gift. And then um, I asked her that I wanted her heart you know, um, and all that. So that's basically how I proposed. Then I also proposed with dates. I always teach guys, you must propose with a date. All right. The most important thing in proposal is not just an engagement ring. Mm. That's what everybody focuses on. But yes. I think you also need a wedding date as you wow. propose. You need, yes. You need to say, hey, I want to marry you. And this is when I want to marry you. Because a lot of people um, propose to women, get them engaged indefinitely mm. and keep them, you know, there are a lot of the rings, <laughs> as we say. They keep them waiting for years and years and years. Yeah. Yeah, and I think I heard you say sometimes, it's like we are the coming, the kind of coming of Christ. Yes. <laughs> nobody knows the hour. Oh, I'm telling you. <laughs> yes. So nobody knows that you get married. It, yes. Oh, good. Amazing. I know, I know you've done so many books, but allow me to ask you a few questions mm-hmm. on this topic of show yourself a man. Yes. I heard you speak about Abigail, and yes. I think we'll come back to that. Mm-hmm. But what does it mean to you when you hear King David say, uh, ask his son to show himself or prove himself a man? What does it really mean to be a man? 
<laughs> in this context, yes. yes. Oh, well, uh, being a man is just simply um, being a cultivator. If you look at the first man God made, God handed things to him mm. for him to cultivate. And the first thing God handed to him, yes, was the earth. And the second thing God handed to him was his wife. But the point was that the first man was supposed to be a manager, mm. a cultivator. Somebody that when you give him things, he makes them better than how they were when they were given to him. Mm. So you're a cultivator. And, and as a man, you start by cultivating yourself. Mm -hmm. That's how, that's where you practice. Yes. But many men have never cultivated themselves. So even when you give them a wife or give them a job or give them any other thing, they don't know what to do with it. So you show yourself a man by your ability to relate with all the factors around you and make them better, lift them better than when, you know, they, they came. Mm. You know, so that's what I feel. Being a man as To well. being a man. Mm -hmm. And in terms of the way when, when, when you spoke on FDC, it almost sounded that as a man, you have a huge responsibility in providing that leadership in a relationship. Yes, yes. And I, I know there are a couple of things that you mentioned. Maybe you can mention one or two that I, I saw you mentioned in your book, A to Z, that men just need to remember to oh, be a blessing to their beautiful. women. Beautiful, yeah. In fact, it, it, um, because I'm very passionate about men, mm -hmm. because um, I couldn't have been the man I am now without coaching, without learning. And I think the major struggle men have is the ability to learn. Most men are kind of slow when it comes to learning. You know, um, we're a bit more rigid. Women are, women are great at being influenced. Women are great at attending conferences, great at reading books, great at hearing what's happening in other places. But men are kind of slow out to do that. Uh, men, men want to figure things out themselves most of the time. That's their instinct. And the challenge with that is that you waste a lot of time trying to figure things out. You know, you, you are an accountant by profession, even though you are, you are in media today. Yes. But let's even use media, all the things you've learned. If I want to start media, it's easier for me to ask you what I need to do than to try to figure it out. Yes. I might figure it out, but I'm going to waste a lot of time and resources trying to figure it out myself. Yes. And most men by instinct hate to ask questions, hate to let somebody else teach them because it makes them feel less of who they are because instinctively they want to figure things out. So my, one of my advice to men is that improve on your learning skills. Be curious, be a faster learner and be open to allowing people to teach you. No matter who they are, no matter their age, you don't even have to like them mm -hmm. to learn from them. Mm -hmm. But let them teach you. That saves you time. Because part of the things that reduces your credibility as a man, especially with women, is you making lots of mistakes and wasting time. And the woman begins to struggle to follow you. Because a woman's role is to follow you. And she's skeptical about a leader that doesn't know where he's going. Mm -hmm. So women are not troublesome. They just want security. That's a woman's major need. Security. security. So when you're doing things that makes her insecure, you know, she becomes bothered. Does this aspect of security uh, change with age, meaning that maybe the older women would need more security and comfort? And, no, I, I don't know if it's more security. No. The, it, there might be difference in focus, but the security is still the same. It's not necessarily more security. Women want security. In fact, that, 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 that is one of my uh, books, again, I'm working on, or a course I've actually developed, titled Seven Things Men Should Provide. Mm -hmm. Most men don't know what they should provide in a marriage. So <laughs> the only thing all men know and have been passing from generation to generation, is that you must provide financially. That's what all men know. And all men think, that's all I have to provide. Once I provide money, I'm the lord of my house. Nobody should tell me anything. I'm in full, I'm in full control. <laughs> but you see, that is not true at all. Mm. You know, this is what men have passed from generation to generation. And it's not the complete story. There are seven things uh, the average man needs to provide in a home. And money is just one of them. So most men are running on one over seven of what they should provide. And this is why their homes are not peaceful. This is why the women don't believe in them. This is why there's a lot of struggle. Um, as of three years ago, nine out of the 10 richest men in the world were divorced, nine out of 10 of the richest men in the world. So these guys had money, loads okay. of money. Yeah, I think I saw Bill Gates as well. Yes. Which is very confusing yes. for men. I mean, <laughs> I have all the money. Because Where it's is the she same going? problem. It's the same problem all men think. Yes. You know, the way men view money, it's not the way women view money. No. Men view money as a prize. Women view money as a tool. So you see, the way we relate to money is different. Men see money as a prize. Once you make money, they think, oh, I've achieved it. I've made it in life. Women see money as a tool, something we spend. So it doesn't score as high mm -hmm. with them as it is does to men. So you still have to do more than just providing money. So all these men think, oh, once I have money, you know, I'm, I'm okay. I tell them, look at all the very, very successful men. You've mentioned Bill Gates. I told you nine out of 10 of the billionaires as of three years ago were divorced. Um, if you check the Donald Trumps, the billionaires, or check the king of Dubai. I've, uh, Dubai is one of my favorite cities. I've been there more than 30 times at least in my lifetime. I love Dubai. I go there every time I have the chance. Mm -hmm. The king of Dubai is divorced five times. What? Yes. And Dubai started as a desert, and today Dubai as a city mm -hmm. has broken over 400 world records. 
Yes. In other words, that man is a genius mm. in terms of how he could turn a desert to a city that has broken over 400 world records. Yes. So he's smart. It doesn't take a stupid man to fail in marriage. No. It just takes an unlearned man, an uninterested man, an uninvolved man. And that's where most men fall into. They are not dumb. These men are geniuses at the office. They are great at what they do. But they're just unlearned when it comes to marriage. Mm. They're unlearned when it comes to women. They think if I make money, the same way I view money is the same way a woman views money. And that's totally wrong. <laughs> <laughs> Women don't see money the way we see it. So you need to, there are seven other things. There are six other things every man should provide in a home beyond money. Pastor Congo, I'm so tempted to, I know the next <laughs> book, but please tell us there may be two more. Yes, I'll, I'll, I'll throw more. So <laughs> definitely money is one of it. Yes. And money doesn't mean you have to have loads of cash. That's no. not what necessarily one, women need to just know that they are secure with you financially. So yes, if you have loads of money, that's, that's an advantage. Mm. But most men are not going to have that amount of money, especially at the beginning. Mm. You need to have financial discipline financial vision, mm -hmm. financial patterns, things that give her security to know that even though you don't have money, you're on the path to having money. Even though you don't have money, you are responsible financially. Mm -hmm. So it's not about the volume at the beginning because most men, I, I didn't have money when I even married my wife. But you see, let her know that you will always share. Let her know that, you know, she matters. So that is important. Now, if you're able to make a lot of money, that's also important mm -hmm. because security is... All the needs are tied to security, all of them. A woman's major, only a woman's major need is security. Mm -hmm. So men always say, oh, women love money. It's not just that they love money, security they love, and money provides security. security. In fact, between me and you, Kissinger, don't tell anybody, mm -hmm. between me and you, sexologists have found out women get better orgasm when they are with a rich man. Really? I'm telling you. <laughs> <laughs> So they get sexually aroused yes. just when there's money on the table. Yes. So people don't know that. So get some money. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> they also found out that if you want to sleep with a woman, one of the things you need to do is to feed her. Mm -hmm. Like if you feed a woman, it's easier to sleep with her. These are things they found out. We have a whole ministry on, on sexologists um, yes. called Wholesome Sexuality. Mm. So all these researches are there. In other words, women love security. Mm. So that's one. Then apart from financial, for instance, on that one is spiritual security. Women are spiritually. One of the things that made me write this book, you talked about um, how to make love to a woman without um, touching her. I broke down the fact that women are first emotional and they're secondarily spiritual. Women are spiritual. That's why um, women love church. Women love men of God. And if they are not born again women, they will still go to native doctors. They will still go to prayer houses. They will still go because they, they, are, they have a spiritual need. Men always tell me, how come my wife respects the pastor and doesn't respect me? Why? Because the pastor ministers to that spiritual need and you are not ministering to that. Most men don't see themselves as the priest of their homes. They don't realize that part of their roles as the head. When they say you are the head, this is the thing they're talking about. Mm. They don't mean you are the Lord to give commands. <laughs> they mean you are the main provider. Mm -hmm. You are the main responsibility officer of that house. And if, if there's a need in that house, which for a woman, spiritual need is a major thing. You as the man, you are supposed to step up. Now, you might not be as spiritual, but can you be the one that takes her to church? Can you be the one that um, suggests that, oh, let's pray as a family? Yes. You know, provide that spiritual need. Mm -hmm. Women love spirituality. And I'll mention one last one. Women also love emotional security. All the needs are tied to security. Yes. So they love emotional security. Um, most men don't understand that a woman is territorial emotionally. Territorial. Yes, emotionally. yes. Men are territorial positionally. Women are territorial emotionally. Ooh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> so a woman likes to know at all times yes. that she's the center of your priority. She needs to know that. She needs to know that she's more important to you than work. So in your pursuing your daily bread and your work, you need to make sure she feels, mm. it's all about the feeling, that she feels secure, she feels important. You need to let her know that. Then in your relation with other females, she needs to know she's not in competition. No. Yes, many men do that. Sometimes, even if it might be your mother, mm -hmm. she needs to know she's not in competition with your mother because the Bible is clear. It says, man shall leave his father and his mother and cleave to his wife. Mm -hmm. But a lot of men are more attached to their moms than <laughs> they are to their wives. They see yes. their wives as disposable. Yes. They see their mom as their family. But that's mm -hmm. not what the Bible says. Mm -hmm. The Bible says you should leave father and mother and cleave to your wife. Your wife is not your primary family. Yes. So you need to give her that comfort. You can't be hiding your phone. Mm -hmm. So men do that. They, <laughs> oh, hide my phone, password. That already makes you a suspect. Mm. The only reason why you're hiding your phone is because there's something that you're hiding. To hide. Yes. Mm. So when you do that, the woman is already insecure emotionally because she doesn't know what on earth is going on your phone. Mm. So you need to create that atmosphere where she's emotionally secure. And it goes on and on. But there are seven major things mm. a man needs to provide in a home that makes a woman happy. So it's not just money. Mm. This is why billionaires are still having divorces because yes. they think if I provide money, I'm done. Mm. No, you're just starting. It's just one over seven. Wow. 
Yeah. No, I'm talking about the phone. I remember, I think you mentioned about something optical. <laughs> <laughs> and your wife reading your charts. Yes, yes, oh yes, women can see from the side of their eyes. Most men don't know that. <laughs> I, I revealed the secret. Most men don't know. Women are wired to see from the side of their eyes. Men and women are different. Yes. That's, that's a major, major thing I emphasize when I teach because it changed my own life when I found out, oh, my, my wife is not a man. Mm. So the things I value are not the things she values. This is why marriages crash. The woman is treating the man as a woman and the man is treating the woman as a man. So they are not getting fulfilled, even though they are all putting a lot of effort, mm. but it's just the wrong effort. Mm. So you need to know how women operate. Women and women are different. I have a book again coming out titled Pink and Blue, where I show the differences and how you should relate to those differences. So a woman's major, a woman's major function is she's from the side of her eyes. Most times when a guy thinks she's checking a lady out, she has already checked you out first. <laughs> She has checked you out already before you check you. her out. Yes, yes. And she's looking straight on, but she's checking you out on that side. <laughs> yes. Because she can see from the corner of her eye. And your man, you just have to turn You have to turn and... your full <laughs> body. Say, what are you looking at? <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. That's interesting. What are some of the things you found out, the huge significant differences that are useful in marriage between men and, men and women? women. Oh, in the next book that you said. Yes. Um, <laughs> like I said, in, in Pink and Blue, I dealt with about 29, I mean 21 major differences that affect you. There are more than 21, mm. but I try to narrow it down to 21 that affect us relationally. Yes. So one of them is talk. All right, men and women are always in the same activities, but for different reasons. So okay. that's what confuses them. Mm. Because we're doing the same thing. Why are you not enjoying it? Why am I enjoying it? Mm. Because we're in the same activities, but for different reasons. reasons. So women talk for affection, men talk for information. Mm. So that's very important. So a woman, talks, a man talks to you because he has something important to say. A woman talks to you because he has somebody important to say it to. Ooh. <laughs> that's so, tweetable. Yes, <laughs> very tweetable. So we're in the same activity, which is talk, yes. but for different reasons. Yes. All right? A man talks to you because he has something important to say. A woman talks to you because she has somebody important to say it to. Mm. So women talk for affection. Men talk for information. Men only talk because they are passing important information. Mm. So men don't see a need to talk if there's nothing important to say. To talk about Men this. don't call it other just to call each other. No, no. Anytime man is calling you, is that going to give you information or is going to ask you for information? Mm. And he sees talk as because because he doesn't have as much words as a woman. So men struggle to talk even from childhood. Girls talk faster. Girls have more vocabulary. You know, girls have more words per day mm. that they use. We have lim it's like having limited data on your phone mm. or limited talk time <laughs> on your phone. That's how men are. We have limited. So we we li we narrow it down to very <laughs> important conversations. Yes. But women on the other hand have unlimited data, mm. unlimited talk time. <laughs> And everything in a woman's life goes to her vocal nerves. If she's happy, she needs to talk. If she's sad, she needs to talk. If she doesn't know how she feels, she needs to talk. So everything goes to her vocal nerves. So you are, you are literally torturing a woman if you're not talking to her. And if you're not talking to her, two things will happen. It's either she would internalize more, which will affect her mood, her mind, and her health, because she's not talking, or she will talk to the wrong person. Adam tried the latter one. Yes. It didn't work out well for him because he wasn't doing the talking. The he serpent was, yes, doing the talking. was talking. <laughs> and the end was not good. <laughs> so that's why I love men complain that, who are you? Why are you bringing these ideas? Because you are not talking to her. Mm. Other people are talking to her. Mm. And nowadays, because of social media, she doesn't even have to talk, talk to somebody physically. No. She can be watching videos, watching um, TikTok, watching things online, and people are influencing her all the time. And she's coming home and giving you the attitude mm. and giving you the issues because you are not doing the talking. Yes. Women must talk. It's not optional. Mm -hmm. So if you're going to marry or date a woman, you want to be available to talk. Now, it won't come to you naturally. That's what the challenge is. Mm -hmm. People are wanting to do only what comes to them naturally. No, you don't succeed in marriage by instincts. Mm -hmm. You succeed by choice, by doing what you have to do in spite of how you feel. Mm -hmm. So when I learned that, I knew that now I have to talk to my wife, whether I'm in the mood to talk or not. Mm -hmm. So if she, women are stressed, they need companionship. On the other hand, if men are stressed, they need solitude. Oh, yes. <laughs> Dr. So, Kongo, that is another powerful so we one. have to teach the women that, that hey, sometimes when your man is tired and stressed, just he doesn't want to pull out. He wants to pull out. He needs some space. And thank God this is a cave. It, it, we use cave because that's what men do. Men yes. go to their cave. So you need to allow him to go to his emotional cave, his mental cave mm -hmm. in the house. My wife understands this. So when I'm tired or stressed, she knows I'm in a thinking mood. She gives me space. It took me time to teach her that when I'm thinking, I know women, women are always worried when you're thinking. They'll come and say, what are you thinking about? Mm -hmm. <laughs> And the man is saying, now I'm thinking about what to tell you I'm thinking about. <laughs> because men just think. Mm. So we need to understand that it, 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 there's no problem. That's how men operate. Because women find it hard when you're thinking about anything. Yes. And they're just quiet. But men need solitude when they're stressed. But then women need companionship when they're stressed. So when both of you know those things, when your wife is stressed, you know that you have to go and hang out with her. Don't give her space. Mm. Don't love her like a man. She's not a man. She's a woman. She needs you. So go hang out with her. 
cuddle her, ask her how her day was, ask her how she's feeling. It doesn't matter what she wants to talk about, just talk with her. But when men are stressed and tired, my wife knows that she gives me space. She tells the kids, even leave the room, because the kids are always in my room. So no, leave that. Daddy wants to stay alone and all that. We get them out of the house. And that's where I reboot. That's where I recreate. That's where I get myself back, my energy back. So understanding those differences and applying them literally in the thing. You understand when I'm, um, for instance, um, women are emotional, men are logical. So this means um, when you're talking to a woman, focus on how she feels. When you're talking to a man, focus on the facts, all right? Women use words to express feelings. Men use words to express facts. Wow. So, <laughs> so that's why if a man and a woman are arguing, if you don't understand this, the argument never leads anywhere because they're never on the same topic. Mm. The woman is focused on how, she's saying what she's saying because of how she feels. But the man is not hearing the feelings. The man is trying to debate based on facts. So the woman will tell a man, you don't love me. Mm-hmm. And, and the man will say, how can you say I don't love you? Last week I took you out. This week yes. I've got, he's staying with the facts. Mm. All she's saying is, I don't feel loved yeah. and all you need to do is to reassure her that she's loved but men we stay with the debate i want to stay with the facts mm. no she's not talking about the facts she's talking about oh, the feelings. feelings so you have to pay attention to the feelings beyond the words and if you're talking to a, if a woman talking to a man you have to stay on the facts mm. beyond the feelings so both need to understand how this so there's uh, lots it's, and lots it's of lots that. <laughs> Yeah. But I think I like this part that you mentioned. Why I don't understand why, or maybe that you've explained yeah. why men wants to withdraw from that space yes. and be, just be alone. Yes, it's, it's, it's how we are wired. That's why this time of this program is called uh, <laughs> the yes. cave. You know, um, men generally we need to withdraw mm. to recreate themselves. The way our minds work is not like a woman's mind. A woman thinks with two sides of her brain. Mm. So this is why you can make love to a woman and she's asking you, "Is the door locked?" <laughs> no. One side of our brain is on the bed with you, the other side is checking the windows, checking the doors, checking if the food is in the yes. fridge. Because that, that other part of my mind is working about. Yes. You know, women, women are like that. They are usually restless emotionally and mentally. Mm-hmm. Men don't realize this. <laughs> women even wake up tired. Mm-hmm. Because most times while they are sleeping, their mind is walking up and down, <laughs> going to the market, doing stuff. You know, women, their minds just move around mm-hmm. like that. So, but for us as men, we, we think slower, we think deeper. So we need time. Mm-hmm to reboot, we need time to think. So it's just a man thing. We're not used to being open and transparent. Vulnerability threatens and terrifies men. Mm. In fact, the meaning of the word vulnerable is to be open to attack. Mm. And men are warriors, so we don't open to attack. So this is why men, it's difficult for a man to even open up and tell you his problems. It's difficult for a man to open up and tell you things because we're naturally not vulnerable. So we learn it, that's the key. Mm. You need to learn how to go beyond your instincts. That's the biggest truth that people need to learn in marriage. Mm. I need to go beyond what I feel. Mm. Women are emotional. They, they did a scan of a man's brain and a woman's brain. A woman's brain, everything, emotions is everywhere. That's why it's difficult for her to have a conversation without making it emotional. It's mm. difficult. Mm. She can't go on and on and on without it becoming emotional because her whole brain is covered with emotion. Yes. Now, a man's brain has just two spots mm-hmm. that have emotions. <laughs> the rest is logic. <laughs> <That's> so... <laughs> so yeah. He, he, not that he's, he lacks emotion, but no. in his everyday yes. relationship, that side is not what comes out. It's only once in a while, maybe with sports or some other thing, you see men crying. Yeah. You see them kissing the trophy. Yes. You see them showing emotion. It's just sports. One sport. <laughs> <Not important. laughs> so when it comes to marriage, they have to learn to unlock mm. those spots and apply it to their marriage. Apply being emotionally available mm. to their spouse. Being emotionally, feel empathy. Feel what your wife is feeling. Yeah. So it takes learning. To do that, if you follow your instincts, you'll be a horrible. You'll be a horrible. Yes. Well, Pastor Congo, you mentioned that, and I just quickly thought about Elijah. When after you've done these amazing things, and yes. he's, and we're celebrating him for killing yes. all the, yes. the bad prophets, yes. but the guy just zones out, goes yes. into the cave or somewhere, cave. exactly, and he just wants to yes. die. To die. <laughs> so he, he needed to. What God told him: eat, <laughs> sleep. But you see, he was not married. If he was married, that would have made good time to cuddle with your wife, have sex, yes. things like that. Mm. So this is why, again, it's not good for man to be alone. Mm-hmm. Men actually do need women. Wow. The only challenge is that some of them don't know the skills to pick a good woman. Mm. So when I, say, when I tell men that, oh, you need a woman, and a woman will change your life, they always say, no, I, the wife I married was bad, or women have dealt with me. It's because they are not good at picking good women. It's not all women that are good for you. All right, women can be such a blessing, but they can be such a curse. If you married the wrong one, you don't want to mess with a bad woman. Mm. A bad woman will finish you. Women <laughs> have killed big people. Samson, mm. um, Solomon, they are great people that women messed up their yes. destiny. So women can be powerful positively, can also be very dangerous if you pick the wrong one. Mm. So you must learn the skills. I have a book titled, Seven Qualities Wise Men Want. 
where yes. I dealt with the qualities. Because most men, most men don't even know they have needs mm. till they get married. Yes. As a man, you have specific needs yes. that women should meet. So you need to know the kind of woman that has these things for you marry. Don't just marry because of looks. She's beautiful. Amazing. Is that, is that the reason why? And I think somebody mentioned that God chose if and after he said, you know what, it is your responsibility. Go find yourself a woman. And I will bless. So he says, he who finds a wife, finds a good, good thing. thing. <laughs> Interestingly, God didn't even pick Eve for Adam. No. God presented Eve. Adam did the choosing. Oh, really? Uh, yes, Say that again. Yes. yes. God yes. presented Eve. Mm -hmm. If people don't realize that, in Genesis, God presented animals. Yes. First. When God said, it's not good for man to be alone, he said, I'll make him help me. Mm. The first things God did were animals. Yes. And he said... He looked at them to see what Adam would call them. And whatever Adam called them, that was the name thereof. And he mentioned that, and for Adam, there was not found the help meet. In other words, God presented all the animals. Adam looked at the rhino and said, oh, this one is too hard. Adam looked at the lion and said, this is too dangerous. Adam looked at the elephant and said, this is too big. He was naming them different things. He said he could not find the help meet. Mm. And they presented Eve the way they presented all the other things. And Adam said, now this is the bone of my bone. So what happens is that when they say he that finds the wife, they were not describing the process. They were describing the fact that if you have found a wife, they didn't tell you how to find. If you look at Proverbs 19, 14, it says, wealth and riches are things you can inherit, wealth and houses are things you can inherit from your father. Yes. He said, but a prudent wife comes from the Lord. So he also said, a virtuous woman who can find. So really, God is not saying go and find no. in terms of your searching. God is saying, look, um, it's a combination of you knowing the qualities you are looking for and me presenting them. So, so when, you, when the two connect, connect you, said, you, this is you the one of my bones. You make that final you know. call. Because you know it. Exactly. Yes. Because you have it there. You say, this is it. Ah, yes. I like what you said. So Adam could have been seeing on Moses and say, now, nah, yeah. checklist, not a, yes. no, this is yes. not it. This is not, not it. it. Yes. Until that point. point. He said, this is the bone of my bone. This connects with me. Wow. Yes. I never <laughs> had it. So it's yes. not like that. <laughs> yes. go go. So God doesn't take response for anybody's choice. Yeah. There's nowhere in the Bible mm. where God picks his spouse for someone. No. Nowhere. It's not in the Bible. Now, as a child of God, you're entitled to being led by God. But again, you still have to take some responsibility for that action. It's not, it's not on God. Because you're the one that will live with this person. The moment you marry because you thought God said that you marry this person, you are going to blame God. You're going to say, oh God, you know, I didn't like this girl. Or this is your choice for me. No. no, no. God will lead you. God will order your steps. But when you get there, that choice has to be your choice. Wow. Mm -hmm. Hey, Doctor, this is heavy stuff. <laughs> this is stuff. I, I, now I'm looking forward to your next book. Because <laughs> you have an amazing you. nugget. Thank you. Could you speak to... Adam's uh, doctor, who are in that place where you're talking about, they, are, they have not been clearly been able to understand who they are, what they want, and provide that leadership in family. Because of the way you've explained, clearly we are totally wired, but the responsibility still rests with us as men. Could you speak to them that somehow they might have to withdraw to Adam's cave, mm -hmm. recalculate, recalibrate, yes. begin to be a wise man, identify the seven things they want, choose a list, for example, or take leadership in the family. I think about the, some of the differences that you mentioned in, 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 in Mary, I think I remember you talked about romance and you talked about uh, respect being different sides of the coin. And some men are just not romantic and they blame the woman yeah. for yes. look, this kind of woman. I think one of the things I read in your book, which was totally amazing for me, was when you took your wife to the US. Yes. Surprising. Yes. <laughs> I will not try that. <laughs> She's not packed. Yes. She's traveling yes. to the United States. Yes. And she's just appearing on no day. Oh. Yes. So maybe you can, before you speak, just give us a story no, a bit. Sorry. Okay. And then help us recalibrate ourselves yes. and we begin to show ourselves so, as men. Okay, so um, again, I told I told men yesterday, even at the, at the Sitam uh, Family Life, Sitam yes. Discipleship Conference, yes. how that, you know, women love romance. Mm -hmm. So we did, from this book, A to Z of Marriage, we broke down how, you know, um, what men want, what women want in alphabetical order. So when we got to letter R, I told the women that men love respect, very important. That's why Abigail was an unforgettable woman. She was able to respect David, you know, she knelt down to talk to David. She called David a lot 10 times and that got David, you know, turned on. David had never been respected that much before. David married her immediately, her husband died. Uh, I told the men that women love romance. R for women is romance. Women grow up with fantasy. The average woman is way more emotionally developed than the average man. From when a child, girl is young, she's playing with dolls playing with, um, you know, house things, pants, pot. She, the dolls, she's making the hair for the dolls. She's changing clothes for the dolls. She's talking to these dolls. She's developing emotionally. The men, on the other hand, when they are boys, they're playing with guns and ball and things like that. Very inanimate things. Yes. They're not developing emotionally. So this is why when they both become adults and want to marry, the woman is very developed emotionally. She's, she has watched so many romantic movies. She's ready for fantasy, ready for romance. The man has no clue. 
what she's talking about. Mm -hmm. So men need to develop on the romantic side. Women like to be surprised. All right? Don't do the ordinary things. Always do everything you do. Do it specially. Mm -hmm. It's the same thing you were going to do. Mm -hmm. Just make sure you put some thoughts yeah. to it. Same thing you were going to do. Just put some thoughts to it. Let it be a surprise. Let it be something that will you know, take her unawares. She would love to know she's still the center of your world. She would love to know you are still fascinated by her. She would love to know that you still think about her. Women, those are, those are the little things that women need that men don't realize. Men just think, if I'm paying the rent, I've done what I need to do. Mm -hmm. Absolutely not. Mm -hmm. so, um, so it was my wife's birthday, September. So I just got an idea to surprise her. So I had been telling her before that time, because we had never been to the US that time. And I've been telling her years before then that I'm going to fly you to United States business class. So then we had never flown business class. We had never been to America. So a few years down the line, her birthday was now approaching. So I looked for these tickets, got some favor, and got tickets at a very affordable price. And I just told her, hey, honey, um, our pastor said we should pick someone at the airport. So he said, ah, but when did your pastor start sending you to the airport to pick someone? I said, well, he couldn't find somebody else <laughs> to send and all that. So she just reluctantly got dressed. And we got to the airport, and I told her, we're not picking anybody. I'm flying you to the United States now, business class, yes. today. And she was like, wow. So like, I've not even packed. And I brought out my debit card, and I said, we'll buy everything Ooh. that you need. It must have been lots of money. <laughs> we'll buy everything. Yeah. Interestingly, the beauty was that I got the tickets for almost free. Okay. So the money I was going to use for tickets... That's what I could use to do the shopping. So I thought that you're going to buy everything because mm -hmm. I was taking her for a Joyce Meyer conference in the US. So mm -hmm. I said, you're going to buy what you wear for the conference. You're going to buy everything. Even the bag you use, you're going to buy everything on the trip. And women Ooh. like to shop. Yes, yes. <laughs> so it was a great trip, yeah. Wow. Yes. And I think that reminds me, there's something you mentioned that somehow it's not our current state. There's something you mentioned about that. You clarified. Mm -hmm. And you said you also need to get the future yes. as, um, as a man. Yes. Yes. So here you are, not, not that you had lots of, of money, money yes. just sitting in the bank and thinking, yes. let me do this. But yes. somehow you created that. Yes, that's what I was talking about. That yeah. It's not about the money. Mm. The woman needs to know that if there is money, she will be your priority. Mm. That's what she needs to know. Yes. And you show it in little things. Okay, there's three pieces of meat in the house. Don't eat two. Mm. Let her know you're a provider. <laughs> Tell her, no, baby, you eat two. A little one. Yes. You see, when she gets the hang that this man will do anything for me, that turns a woman on. She will now do anything for you. Women are like a harvest system. Whatever you put in them is what they pour back to you. And they multiply it. You never get it the same way you give them. Mm -hmm. So if you, if you give the, a woman a sperm, she gives you children. If Correct. you give her um, um, groceries, she gives you a meal. If you give her a house, she gives you a home. She's a multiplier. So everything she's giving back to you is what you sowed as a seed. So that's why I teach men, sow love. You are going to reap real love from a woman. But if you sow distrust, if you sow anger, if you sow selfishness, then you will see a different dimension to it too. Because she has that too. Wow. <laughs> wow. Dr. Kongo, before I let you go, yes. you mentioned about nine out of ten of the rich people sometimes yes. end up in divorce. divorce. Yes. If you have to sit with this great man, because yes. I know that Adam say, well, rich, and they say, man, I got the money, I can take my wife to yes. Dubai anytime. Yes. But they still have the risk of the woman being unhappy. What would you tell them? It's very simple. You see, women are not just unhappy out of the blues. Mm. So it starts from number... It's, the truth is that men struggle to learn about relationship or marriage. Mm. Instinctively, men want to hear about business. Yes. They want to hear about work mm. because we are first work-oriented. Mm -hmm. Women are first family-oriented. And God made us different because the difference together brings a balance. If, men were, if women like, were like men and both of us were work-oriented, the family will drop. If men were like women and were both family-oriented, then the business and commerce side will drop. So we need to be different to bring two different things to the table and create a balance. Man and a woman together is the proper image of God. No one on their own represents God fully. Man and woman together represents the image of God. That's what Genesis 1 and 2 says. Mm -hmm. So um, those men first need to learn that because you are work-oriented doesn't mean you should not learn about family. Mm -hmm. All right, the way you, the life works, you have strengths and you have weaknesses. Focusing on only your strength doesn't mean you're going to succeed because your weakness can come overnight and wipe away your strength. Yes. So you need to focus and develop your strength, but manage your weakness. That's how to continue. So men need to learn more about relationship and marriage. Um, learn about what kind of woman to pick. You see, most men are wasting their energy learning how not to pay divorce fees or alimony fees. That's what they're, that's what they're learning. No, mm. where, you should, where, where the learning starts is yes. picking a woman you can trust. Yes. A woman that really loves you. Mm. I jokingly tell my wife that even if we divorce tomorrow, I'll still trust you with our money because you're a way better financial manager than me. <laughs> That's, that's how close we are. Yes. So I'm not trying to hide my money from my wife. No, no I, we've always run our money together. So know how to pick. This is why I say it. 
know how to choose right and how to marry right. So you have to know how to choose right and how to marry the person you have chosen right. Because you can marry the right woman and treat her badly. And she will still be upset and leave you. So um, those men need to learn that having money is not all that requires. There are other things a woman needs. And if having money is an advantage, it's just that those men have become addicted to work. Because when God created man, he gave man work first. When God created woman, he gave woman a husband first. So woman is family oriented, man is work oriented, but we need both. So man needs to honor the woman's own passion, which is family. So being this rich means you have time to go on vacation. Yes. But most, most women want to still stay in the office and make more money. Mm-hmm. Women have learned, women know that at a certain stage in your life, an extra $10,000 will make a difference in your life. Yes. But an extra 10 hours with your children will make a difference. Ooh. Women know that, but men don't know this. Men would rather you know, neglect their family to go and chase that extra $10,000. Yes, yes. So they are very rich, but the family is broken. Mm. This is why the richest men are divorced. Because they keep chasing money. At the, they've reached a stage. They don't even know why they are working anymore. Yes. They've become addicted to work. They are not workaholics. Mm. They don't even know why they are working. They, they, they check there are about 3, 000, over 3,400 billionaires in the world. Only 11% of them are female. These are billionaires. Yes. Only 11% of them, are, that's about 300 mm. or plus, are female billionaires. Mm. In that 11%, Ha- more than half of them inherited the wealth. So mm-hmm. only a small fraction of women have built billions from scratch. Yes. So very small fraction. Why is that so? Because the average man knows that an extra $1 million at a certain stage in your life will not make you happier. Mm-hmm. Women know that there are other things in life that needs to go on. Women know that spending time with your kids is important. Yes. Looking beautiful is important. <laughs> oh yeah, they spend time on yes, it. Yes, just go and look beautiful. It's because why are you working if you're not going to spend the money? Yes. I laugh at some men. I, when I hear men at 80 years old say they're buying investment, I say, for what? Yeah. For what? <laughs> say, yeah, I want to get some return. When you get the return, what are you going to do with it? <laughs> I'm going to invest it. Then what will you do with that? I will invest it. Mm. They've lost track. <laughs> Of why they are even working. <laughs> you yes. must stop at some point mm. and go and spend time. This is why you are rich. Yes. Take one year off and travel with your kids. Mm. Go for your kids into house sports. Go for your kids uh, recitals. Do stuff. Take your wife on vacation. Take your wife on a shopping spree. And carry her the bags while she's shopping. <laughs> These are the things <laughs> life is made of. Do mm. the simple things of life. Mm. But most of these guys get so rich and so fixated on making money. They just continue. They don't even know why they are working anymore. Mm. They are addicted to work and they lose every other thing. They lose their health, lose their family, lose their friends just to make money. And when they reach the top, they find that they are lonely. Mm. They die lonely, most of these guys. And they're leaving money for their kids, thinking they made the kids love them. No, it's not what you leave for your children that matters. It's what you leave in your children that matters. The memories, the values, the culture that you leave in them is more important than what you leave for them. Wow. Hey, Dr. Nkongo, that's amazing. <laughs> I wish we had all the time. And you should have session two of this when you come back to Kenya. Yeah. But you. before I let you go, Dr. Nkongo, yeah. one more thing. What about men, those Adams right now who listen to these amazing yes. things and are looking at hearing your story yes. and saying, boss, where I am, things yeah, are bad. How can they rescue? Very simple. Guys, the first thing I would suggest is to get to know God. You can't find yourself until you find God. Amen. Your maker is important because he designed you. He knows the true purpose you have, both as a man and your own specific assignment as a man on the earth. Mm. Because it's not everything that you're called to do. There are many other things. Um, I, I know some things about business, but I don't think that's the core of what I, it's not gonna make me happy. You know, you need to find what will really make you fulfilled. And it's only in God you'll find it. There are so many things you can do in this world. It's not all that'll make you happy. Mm. And you don't have the whole of your life to make the most of your life. Mm. That's what you need to realize. Yes. There are many interests, but you can't do all of them. Mm. So you, it's, it takes you finding God. That helps you find yourself. We're a reflection of God. Amen. So God is like a mirror. When you find God, you now see yourself. yourself. But many men are not interested. They want to find themselves without finding God. Mm. And that's just going to be, it's going to take you all your life. You can even finish building a business and find out you're not happy. Mm. So find God. That helps you find yourself. Then before you now start finding a woman and raising a family, everything is tied to you finding God. Because when you find God, he also teaches you not just about yourself. He will teach you about women, teach you about life, mm. teach you about what matters. You know, life is, 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 is a currency. You are spending your yes. life every minute. And it's, it's not like money where you can make it back. No. Once you, today, as we have spent today, it's gone. It's gone. Now, the beautiful thing is that we spend today doing something good that will benefit millions and millions of men in one yes. day. But if it's gone, it's gone. We've okay. spent it. Mm-hmm. So the way we say it is that don't just um, spend your life, invest your life. And the best way to do it is to talk to God because he's the biggest investor that there is. Wow. He created this earth. He's the biggest big. So you need to talk to him. So most men find God and improve your learning ability. Mm-hmm. Men struggle with learning. And I think 
is the biggest thing I've seen. When we do programs like this, men hardly buy books. Mm. They hardly want to learn about anything. They just think they want to figure it out. And it's taking them the whole of life. And too many mistakes. Too many mistakes. Some you can't recover from. Some mistakes you recover from, some you don't recover from. That's true. Too many mistakes because you're trying to learn on your own. Wow. So let somebody teach you. Get mentors. Get other men that have succeeded in the areas that are trying to succeed. And learn from them, not just financially. Not just financially. Maritally. Do you have a marital mentor? Do you have a, a physical mentor? Do you have different mentors? A spiritual mentor? That helps your life, yes. Wow. Dr. Congo. Thank you. Amazing. <laughs> please pray for us. And maybe Thank you can you. have a part of it if you want to. And please yes. pray for us that we, all these things you've shared, yes. amazing stories, God will help yes. us put them together yes. and improve yes. our marriages and our lives. Heavenly Father, we thank you. Thank you for this program. Thank you for the presenters, the team, the crew. Thank you for anointing them to serve their generation mm -hmm. according to your will. And Lord, we speak over all the men that are watching from all over the world. Lord, we ask that your hand comes upon them. Let there be a hunger and a desire for them to know you personally. They will no longer have secondhand knowledge of God. They will know God for themselves. And Lord, as they begin to behold you, they begin to see also the reflection of who they really are. And they find themselves in you, find their own purpose in life. And they become the best kind of men you have created them to be. Mm -hmm. The kind of men that their families will be proud of, their wives will admire, yes. their children will like. And Lord, we pray that their generation will be happy that they came. Thank you, Father, for no man watching me will be wasted. No destiny watching me will be wasted. And I pray for any man struggling in any area of life, whether financially or with a habit or sexually or in any way, I release grace for help right now in the name of Jesus. The hand of God will come upon you and help you. And God will surround you with good people, with other men that have succeeded. And they will show you what true success means in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. And amen. Amen. And amen. Thank you so much. Thank you, Kizinga. It was good. This was good. We need to do this again. <laughs> amen. Come back again to Kenya. We shall do we'll this. Do thank Adam, you. thank you for being part of this amazing conversation. Eves, thank you for Eves dropping. It's always yeah. a joy to have you Eves drop. <laughs> yes. And we look forward again next week, next Friday, for another very, very exciting conversation. Conversation. This is the only station where you can look and leave. That's Hop TV or in Listen and Leave, Hop FM. Looking forward to seeing you again next week. Thank you.